Jake says I need to tie that down. I say hogwash. What do you say? That ain't going anywhere. What's the worst it could do? Ruin my compressor and my truck? Jeez. even came with pins in it that's a plus piece of cake in like Flynn And it's locked. Oh. And look at that, the thump. Oh. So it hits the one tip over there. Actually, it's going to hit. No, oh, it's going to clear that one. It hits, it hits that one, but it, the other one that clears is up to hay ho here. Yeah, that don't look right. That should go between them, shouldn't it? I don't, I don't you can know. Slide it this way, but no matter which way you slide it, it's it's right on the speed, so it won't. It's not gonna close, but I don't. Oh yeah, you do. You have quite a bit of room there it'd fit tight between them wouldn't it He's getting them out of there and fairly clean, so this is going way faster than Kitty Claws.
got a rock stuck in there though. Oh, there it goes. This is what I ripped with the cat and uh, he's not over here yet but he's gonna go through it and see if ripping it with a cat helps but that rock rake will take some abuse way more abuse than our kitty claws plus they're all broke except one of them this is an especially bad spot right here. There's just a huge amount of boulders in here. See, he can get them pretty clean. in there. So this is what's underneath the rock. That's six feet of dirt. And he starts running into some sand when he gets down in there. I just took a picture of him standing in there. It's quite a deep hole. So there's lots of dirt here. There's just all these dang rocks all over. We'll get them cleaned up. So he's just going to work this way on what I rip. See how it goes. And then we'll make the decision whether we got to rip all this with a cat or not. But ripping it with the cat opens it up. It dries out. Uh, tears bricks the sod up I can't help but think that's the way to go is to rip it first let it let it dry because once you let it dry that dirt falls out between those tines pretty well oh a lot of people have asked why we just don't buy a crusher and crush it um, because nobody wants crushed lava rock around here um, there's so much cheap pit run in the valley you can dig a hole anywhere and get good uh, pit run with sand in it makes excellent road base you can crush that and make three quarter the problem with crushing lava rock is it's believe it or not it's soft and then it's very abrasive on rubber tires. So even if you used it for like your sub base on a road, you still got to top it with a crushed gravel um, to keep you from tearing up the tires real bad. So, and then over time it wears down and it, it starts to turn to kind of a dust. Um, it's been tried before. It, it's an excellent base, but it's no good as a top coat for anything and since you can buy crushed three-quarter tax included for eight and a half bucks a ton here and pit run gravel for two and a half bucks dumped in your truck by the time you pull all this crap up and run it through a crusher you're probably gonna have ten bucks in it so it doesn't make financial sense to even bother crushing it now you could certainly sell it for riprap 
but not under our current administration. Uh, they've pretty much killed the rip wrapping business because now for every acre of rip wrap you put on the riverbank, you got to give them three acres to make up for the wetlands. And it's like, wait a minute, uh, you didn't destroy any wetlands. You're not developing, I don't know. It's nuts, but that's what they're telling me. Environmentalist wacko BS. So about the only way you can get around that is you go on your property, go up, stay a little bit away from the riverbank, dig a huge deep trench, put the lava rock in it. Then when the river comes and tears the gravel away, it gets to the lava rock and you now have a rip wrap bank. There's not a thing in the world they can do about that. You don't need any permits, no environmental studies, nothing. So that's the only way you can get around it. Okay, let me take you for a ride here, just coming out of the job. So I ripped that field over there, it had really bad rock in it. And I think the guy cleaned it up. I don't know what he did with it, but they can grow a pasture in it without all those rocks sticking up. All you gotta do is just go down the road here, quarter mile. As you can see, that field really has nothing in it. It's like it ends kind of right there. And then this piece, this high piece here, had a few rock piles in it years ago that we ripped up and he just hauled the loose rock off and now he can farm it. So right here by the road was a rock knob full of big rocks. And then as soon as you drop down into here, no more rock. If you go digging down in here, you'll find gravel. And where all these houses and stuff are sitting, that's all gravel underneath. There's some dirt on top, foot, foot and a half, and then it's uh, gravel. When I was about 12 years old where they built this LDS stake center, I pulled a land plane around on that property with an old TD-18. Uh, out back where the ball filled and all the grass is at and leveled it up. So let's go this way and I'll show you up the road here. Uh, can't shift this forward. some dirt here and then you'll find gravel underneath and then right up the road here is where the runoff water will come through here when it comes off the desert really bad they got a couple of big pipes under the road here comes in right here and then there's some big pipes under the road so as soon as you get to here, this is the other ridge. And where this house is, you can see the giant boulders that they pulled out and used for landscape. And then they land leveled this property and it's sitting right on solid lava right there. And it just kind of runs that way but after you get across the road here, it's all pretty good. We leveled this one and it had rocks all over through here. And they used to flood irrigate that. And they just cleaned all the rocks up and hauled them off. And then that all out there, it doesn't have the rocks sticking up on the ground, but if you dig down, it's rocky and then everything that way you've got some rock but you don't have it sitting up on top of the ground like it is back there so the runoff water comes down through here 
And if they ever got another big flood, it'd go through his trees, across his driveway. He'd need a boat to get to his house. Goes on down through here. Goes down across the uh, Snake River High School football field. Goes under Highway 39. And then just makes its way down to the river. Now, uh, back in the 80s, is the last time I saw a big runoff come and these guys here all had to have boats to get to their houses because the water all runs through here and it runs between the the ditch there has got a pipe under it so it'll run through there and it runs down through this big gully but all of this in here is dirt with gravel underneath it and this has a lot of dirt on it through here before you find gravel. But the farther south we go, the closer the gravel is going to get to the ground. Anyway, the water will come through here, through their football field, baseball field. I've actually got some old uh, 8 millimeter film that I had converted to digital. I'll dig that out and show you. Right here where this store the store wasn't here this this uh, old film is going to go back to uh, 1962 or 64 and dad took it it's actually color but it was quite a chunk of water. So if the deserts froze and there's a lot of snow on it and then it rains, we get a big runoff. And it's happened before, it'll happen again. lesson you tell me what put those rocks there I haven't got a clue there's got to be somebody that knows about the geology of this area okay I got this uh, rake from bedrock attachments and I visited them at con expo and uh, they make a lot of stuff make rippers clear up to D10, T, R, and Ns, and clear down to D5s, D4s, D3s, just everything you can imagine. Uh, looks like they cover the John Deere, the Komatsu, the Case. They make uh, bulldozer screens and sweeps. To fit cat John Deere. They make some bulldozer stick rakes. That's probably what we need for the cat. But they make and they make them clear up to fit the D9s. Counterweights, uh, motor scraper paddles for your 623s, 13s, and 15s. Uh, loader fork loader ripper you know I haven't seen those for years I know my old 988 and some of the older ones had those but I haven't seen those for a long time but they make them they make uh, motor grader rippers motor grader bulldozers front blades scare fires push blocks clear up to the 14M they cover the John Deere Volvos long reach sticks and stuff for excavators Cat, Volvo, John Deere Komatsu, Kabelko, Doosan Sani, Case Thumbs <laughs> 
buckets, excavator rippers, couplers, articulated truck tailgates for cat, Volvo, Bell, John Deere, roller pad foot shell kits, skid steer attachments. There's a concrete mixer for a skid steer, mower brush cutter, four in one buckets, tree spade, and they also had uh, motor grader mow boards. Anyway, uh, they are in Irvine, California. There's their web address and their phone number. Anyway, they seem to build some pretty good attachments and our rock rake has cat ripper tips on it has cat bolts in it it came with the pins um the only thing and i don't know if this is going to really cause us any issues with that is our thumb won't close in between the ripper tips there's two of them that touch and even though i slid the coupler over you got quite a bit of room in there. I still couldn't get it to fit. So, and I didn't even ask about that. So that's my fault. I should have asked about that. So I came over last night with the 14 and bladed all this and bladed that much rock up. It's pretty clean. Like I said, you're still going to have to go through this with a tiller a chisel plow something and pop all these up and then these are gonna have to probably get picked up over time either by hand or with a rock picker um, all of this in here was done with our kitty claws that I welded together for Matt um, I did rip up in here with the cat and that really helps because it breaks up the sod and then things dry out and then Matt can come in and clean this up pretty well. Uh, I've never seen this many rocks before and you know such a tight area. This place was really bad. There's places where there's not a lot but then there's also places where, holy cow, it's just really thick. But like I said, Matt dug a hole over here after he cleaned the rock up and he can go down six feet. There's six feet of good dirt under this, but um, the top couple of feet are just littered with rock. And it just seems to be an anomaly through here. I've never seen this before. Generally, there'll be some ro loose rock on top and then it's solid, but this is not. If you want something like that, call them and tell them J. Pay Dirt sent you. It helps me, helps them. It's advertising for them. Um, like I said, so far I'm, we're happy with it other than the thumb does not close between the teeth and I should have asked about that uh, I don't know if that's going to be a problem for us or not I mean so far I think Matt's been loading the rock in the truck without the bucket and he can just curl it and that holds quite a bit of rock in it but I think if a guy got a narrower spacing on the teeth, if that was possible, I think you're just going to get a lot more dirt. Um, it's almost, for a job like this, I think it's um, it would almost be mandatory if you want to do it all with a rake. You'd have to have two different rakes or two excavators, one with the big one spacing and then one with a smaller one to try to get the small stuff. There's just, there's no easy to, way to do this. I've had people say, well, you need a, a grizzly. Yes, a grizzly would work, 
but you're going to handle it a lot. A trommel, that's expensive too. Um, we just try to do it the cheapest way possible and get it cleaned up as well as we can. I just wish we could use the rock for riprap. We do have a job um, where we could take a lot of it and do some rip wrapping. But like I say, our current administration has made it just damn near impossible to do any of that anymore. Unless it's a government agency and then they'll just walk right through the process and they'll open all the doors, but for private individuals, forget it. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we needed one of these. Uh, we just didn't know what we needed and that's why we built the kitty claws and they worked but they weren't heavy duty enough and so when matt got a hold of me through instagram and told me about this and i like i said i visited him at con expo i went cool what kind of deal can you give old jay pater so i just bought the thing we'll use the heck out of it i'm sure um, we'll give it a good test out on this project. So you guys have an awesome weekend.